Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India first uh, live discussion session so i think till now we have completed three modules so if you have any questions regarding the lecture uh, that to our cover till now or if you have some general question about the course uh, you are most welcome to ask questions uh, <coughs> can i see the questions are So, I mean, you, you can ask questions. Uh, in the meantime, I will be taking few questions that were asked in the Google link. So, Likita asked, do you think uh, we can have a future career through this course or maybe research areas? Uh, Likita, uh, definitely uh, you can have some advantage or, you know, by taking this course. Uh, in terms of career or in terms of some research areas. So broadly, this course has uh, elements from different areas of psychology. Uh, predominantly, uh, the areas are from health psychology, positive psychology. Uh, so if you are interested into these areas of research, obviously, uh, the content of this course will be very helpful. Uh, at least the basic concepts uh, will be clear by attending this course and it can help you to guide your research and uh, you know, proceed in that direction. For career, obviously, you know, um, if you are interested in health psychology, clinical psychology, counseling psychology, a lot of these concepts will be helpful in that direction also. Uh, and um, so in terms of career perspective, uh, if you are interested in all these areas, uh, the contents of this course will be helpful. It will give you insights into uh, these directions and obviously, uh, these are part of all these areas that we have discussed. <clears throat> Some student ask uh, about this course, whether, you know, uh, not directly in the Google link, but in the uh, emails, that whether or not this lecture can be, uh, you know, uh, done through Hindi language or some other regional languages. So at present, we don't have any other uh, medium of instruction because these are mostly pre-recorded lectures and uh, these are all English medium lectures. Uh, so it, at this stage, it is not possible at least, you know, uh, to give lecture in Hindi, or Hindi language or some other regional languages. Probably there will be some translation in the future. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but you know, so there are subtitles for each lectures in the video lectures. If you are not comfortable in English, probably you can uh, you know, look into the subtitles and you know, proceed according to your own pace of understanding. So that will be helpful. Uh, students, uh, there are some of the, uh, some one also, also asked about So when you ask question in the Google form, please be specific what you want to ask, you know. Some questions I'm not able to understand what you are asking. <clears throat> uh, Bala Murugan said, is this certified course? I mean, these are all AICT approved courses. So you can uh, use the credit of these courses in uh, many institutes, universities, courses. Uh, for 12 week course, I think you can get three credits. These are all AICT approved courses. Somebody asked teaching style. I don't know whether it is bad teaching style or good teaching style. I don't know. Your question should be more specific. Uh, someone asked, uh, Nisha asked, uh, what is the use of this course? Again, I asked you about in terms of 
career or in terms of research areas this can be helpful in terms of use uh, obviously if you are in academically interested into all these areas this will be very helpful uh, beyond that i think the greatest advantage would be you know this course the content of this course is very strongly connected to your day to day life function so whatever topic we are discussing these are all connected to everyday functioning of life our experiences of life our emotional experiences our mental experiences how we think how we feel how different events experiences how our mental experiences affects our body how could we enhance our well being so all these contents are directly connected to our day to day functioning of life so i think the greatest use or you can say um, the best use of this course would be in your own life in terms of applications and obviously academically if you are interested into psychology the content will be very much helpful uh dr b gomati as in our working environment how to handle the stress in the same environment others are working without any stress they don't bother about deadline give me the solution uh, uh dr gomati uh this course well I'm largely i mean it's based on the concept of stress and the coping strategies we have just started because first few modules are about defining various concepts after that uh, the lectures will be dedicated on coping strategies uh, there we will discuss in detail about how to handle stress how to deal with stress and uh, why there could be possible some individual differences some personality factors that are involved into uh, in the different reactions why people are different in terms of reaction of stress so all this your question will be dealt in detail about in the upcoming lectures so i think uh, be patient a little bit uh, this course will elaborately deal with your question and just to broadly talk about it about it uh, i can just say that you know uh, individuals there are individual differences all human beings are different and unique so our reaction patterns patterns are also different uh, i may deal a situation in, in a certain way other person may deal with the same situation in a different ways it also depends on whenever you are working in an environment or in a particular working situation what is your goal what is your achievement orientation are you interested into uh, into certain long term future goals that will also influence how whether you are not stressed about something or not uh, furthermore also the you know not all stress are met let's say you are stressed by certain deadline i don't think it's a bad thing so when we talk about stress we're not talking about stress all stress is same thing uh, there are stress which can be bad so upcoming lectures will deal with all this also and there are something called as eustress stress which is also good for you because without certain stimulus or certain intensity or certain level of stress in your life probably you will not be motivated to do a lot of things which you are doing in your life so some level of stress is important and it is important for your growth personality development and uh, you know achievement in your life so let's say you are stressed by deadline i don't think it's a bad thing if you take it positively and do your work because of a certain deadline so if you are doing that in your work at work and performance i think it's a positive quality and it will help you you know to achieve your goals uh so so let us understand when we talk about stress we are not talking about only negative aspects of it there are positive dimensions to it all these things will be covered in the upcoming lectures mm. uh divya ask uh, how does the body decides to choose between sam hpa pathway when stress is experienced divya it is not that the body uh, or somebody kind of consciously deciding about it whenever we experience stress both the pathways are activated simultaneously you know so it's not that you know you decide con- or body is deciding con- no i will take this part or that part whenever we experience stress these are all automatic you know mechanisms that body follows uh, that the same path or hpa paths these are all governed by you know very automatic processes of our body so you experience stress at the mental level same path or same path you know autonomic nervous system gets activated which then you know activates you know uh, medulla part of 
adrenal gland which secretes certain hormones and then hormones will do certain functions in your body in terms of let's say your heartbeat will increase you know perspiration will increase so many things we, we experience after stress similarly hpa axis also gets activated which is little slower uh, it takes little bit more time in terms of coming into effect you know hpa axis may take about half an hour uh, sam axis is very quick immediately whatever reaction that happens is because of the sam axis and hp is little slower uh, which releases certain hormones such as cortisol which does you know different impacts on your body uh, so we are talking about the chronic stress which is very bad if stress is remains for a very long time in your life let's say you know weeks and months you are not able to get rid of some stress this will have a lot of bad impact on your body through these physiological mechanisms and hormonal changes in your body so so these are these are uh, you know it's not that body is deciding what to take both the uh, pathways gets activated uh, same is very quick immediately if stress is very short time same will be more active but let's say it's for a little bit longer uh, hpa path also gets activated so it's like simultaneously both the path activated one part takes little bit more time one is much more quicker uh, someone asked uh, can i get a job after i get the certification of this course on job uh, no one can guarantee you about jobs uh, so this is a course not you know don't expect it like you know after taking this course you will get a job or something a job it may be helpful in certain careers if you are let's say counselor or you are in the profession of clinical psychology uh, this course uh, can be an added advantage to your cv and it may help you you know increase, enhance insights into those areas uh, or if you are in the teaching professions so in the or in the research so it will be helpful indirectly in all these areas uh, but no one can uh, tell you that if you take any course you will get job after this you know this may be helpful in getting job or enhancing your cv so obviously this can be also helpful in the, in those directions so in the meantime when uh, questions are not there i will take some of the questions that are asked in the bottom uh, someone also asked about uh, what is you know cognitive behavior therapy uh, now cognitive behavior therapy is basically so there are different approaches to therapy therapy when we talk about we are talking about verbal therapies you know or mild cases you know there are people are such certain psychological disturbances and there uh, so certain there are different types of psychological therapies are given one of the schools of thoughts or approaches of psychological therapy is cognitive behavior therapy which is quite popular nowadays and the main focus of cognitive behavior therapy is about you know you know changing thought processes particularly a lot of emotional problems and behavioral problems are, are because of you know people are have certain thought processes which are maladaptive you know their ways of thinking processes probably got wrong in some way probably they may be very pessimistic so there are a lot of negative thoughts which are causing all the problems in them so cognitive behavior therapy aims at kind of you know changing those thought processes using certain techniques uh, so that when your thought processes changes accordingly your emotions will change your behavior will also follow because thoughts are more important it is at the thought level that we experience all these things so cognitive behavior therapy has again you know different uh, specific kinds of techniques uh, one technique will be discussed uh, one particular approach very in detail we'll discuss is when we talk about coping strategies in the upcoming lectures uh, there we'll talk about you know abc theory or rational emotive behavior therapy uh, that we throw a model we try to understand how thought influences your emotions uh, that it is not the external event that actually causes any emotional problem it is between the event and the reaction there is our mental processes or thought processes or belief system which are most important to responsible for all the emotional consequences so if you have some disturbed emotion most probably it is because you have certain maladaptive thought processes going on 
so if you can correct that or at least address that properly in a more healthy way uh, we can uh, change a lot of emotional issues disturbances behavioral issues so that is what cognitive behavior therapy does <clears throat> Uh, another uh, person in the portal asked about this uh, what is the difference between primary and secondary appraisal now this when we talk about primary and secondary appraisal uh, this is a kind of process that you know uh, through which you know our experience of stress is kind of experienced so there are two processes one is primary appraisal one is secondary appraisal so this is a model that talks about how stress is experienced or what are the thought or cognitive processes behind the experience of the stress so one is primary appraisal one is secondary appraisal so in the primary appraisal the thing is whenever we see something in the environment so there is some stimulus we get stress about something so there has to be some stimulus we see something we need to do something so there is some stimulus environmental stimulus uh, now stress happens so at the first level it is primary appraisal so you basically make a judgment about that situation or environment or a stimulus mostly stress happens when you judge it in a certain uh, sense you know you judge it certain way that you know something is not right or it is threatening for me uh, or possibly it will be very difficult to do something you know? so these are the things that happens at the initial level when you see something there is an environmental stimulus there is some situation you make some judgment about that situation so that is primary appraisal first thing that happens and mostly it happens when you see some threat some harm possible harms and it is going to be very difficult to deal with something that leads to certain mental experiences of stress it starts the next process that happens is called secondary appraisal there you judge will i be able to handle this situation so there is a difficulty in your life so you are judging it it is a negative situation this is primary appraisal then you think will i be able to handle this situation given whatever resources i have that is secondary appraisal uh, now if you think if you make this judgment that i will not be able to handle this or consciously or unconsciously stress is the result of that so this primary and secondary appraisal then you know uh, results into the experience of stress so these are a kind of cognitive processes that are involved behind uh, how man mind ex creates stress in your and the and the experience experiential level so mm, uh, I don't see much questions in the live portal. If you have any question, you can ask uh, uh, any clarification because a lot of technical things are covered in the lecture. Uh, if you don't understand anything, you can ask now because through mail, it is not all the time. It is not easy to explain all the things by writing through responding to mails. So live sessions are that is why they are arranged. Sometimes it is much more easier to explain and you know, if you don't understand, you can again cross question. Those things are generally difficult while we respond through mails. So if you have any question, uh, please ask. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just taking some questions that were asked uh, in the ask me question in, uh, uh, section of the portal. Uh, somebody asked, you know, uh, I think uh, in the portal, uh, tendon brief befriend phenomena. Uh, if you have attended that lecture, you can uh, remember tendon befriend phenomena uh, helps to reduce stress in females. So it, uh, there has been found to be a gender difference in terms of stress reaction. Generally, uh, whenever we experience stress, uh, the first kind of physiological response that happens is called, you know. Uh, fight or flight response so it's a kind of automatic response of the body that either you try to fight with the situations or you try to run away if you find if you think it is not possible for me to deal with the situation and at the physiological level autonomic nervous system gets activated and it provides a lot of energy 
so that you can handle the situation you know so you can understand whenever there is a danger or threat automatically your heart beat increases and you get suddenly seems you have full of energy and kind of energy is more than what normally you used to have so it is done by activation of the autonomic nervous system so that is a part of fight or flight response uh, some research also also indicated that at the biological level probably there is some gender difference uh, so there is a, another phenomena that may happen is called as tend or befriend response uh, which is mostly found probably more commonly found among females uh, which says that you know under stressful situations uh, probably because of some evolutionary uh, reasons females uh, probably you know they show more nurturing nature for their dependents and the offspring uh, because that helps them to survive survival of the species and befriend is basically they expand the social network whenever they are under the stressful situation uh, so it's not that every time it will happen like that so, but uh, there may be you know situation to situation things may change but this is a general phenomena that are possible and more pronounced to a found among females and some biological uh, you know uh, you know uh, um, um, reasons have also been discovered that you know uh, oxytocin hormone is more found among females uh, under stressful circumstances and oxytocin is kind of promotes this kind of tendon and uh, you know responses biologically normal circumstances also uh, so it's not that all the time it will happen like that fight and flight response can happen to females also and males also equally uh, but evolutionary it seems females tend to show tendon prevent response also which is more than you know more pronounced to be if you if you kind of look at in a more general way so how much time we have covered how much time? we can find out so if you have any question you can ask uh uh someone asked also about uh, classical conditioning in humans uh, you have uh, have you i think this is uh, in the module third module when we talk about how stressful experiences chronic stress is connected to you know, decrease of immune system uh, there we discussed about uh, a branch of study called psycho neuroimmunology it's a it's a interdisciplinary area of research where you know people have found uh, i mean this area of research basically tries to understand uh, the connection between mental experiences psychological how it influences neurological system neural pathways and which ultimately you know influences immune system so so there seems to be research seems to be very clearly uh, find out the connection between psychological as processes or thought processes which influences your neuro brain and other nervous system and ultimately it influences your immune system so in that context we have discussed that you know uh, the initial research in this area they found that you know immune system can be classically conditioned which basically means some psychological factors can influence your immune system so classical condition is a phenomena where basically you know uh, we learn thing by associating to two things we learn new things by associating two uh, two uh, two things when they come together again and again we learn a new response so we talked about an experiment that was done uh, you know pavlov's dogs experiment where you know dog generally they don't whenever you sound a bell dog generally will not respond until unless it's a very very strong high intensity sound dog may be afraid of it but if in a neutral normal sound of a bell dog will not generally respond in any specific way uh, pavlov what did what he did he kind of you know kind of associated sound of a bell with meat powder which is a food very you know a dog like meat powder as a food 
So when meat powders are produced in front of a dog, saliva generally you know comes out of a dog's mouth. So this is a this is a natural response, uh, unconditional response. You know, you see food, you no know, saliva comes out automatically. It happens. Now in this automatic response, when a neutral stimulus such as bell, if you just produce a bell, dog will not respond. But what the Pavlov did, he associated meat powder, and after that, you know, bell was, you know, the, the bell was produced and then meat powder was given. So bell and meat powder were associated together again and again. And obviously, after bell, meat powder was produced and meat powder kind of, you know, produced saliva in the mouth of uh, the dog. Okay. So when this is connected together again and again. In many trials, then after some trials, when bell was given, bell was produced, or uh, the saliva was coming out of the dog's mouth, which was not earlier the case. But so, so dog learned a new response to produce saliva in response to a bell sound, simply because it was associated with the meat powder. So the, now dog understood that if bell means meat powder is going to come, so it was creating a response. So it's a kind of learned response. Conditioned response, so that is called classical conditioning paradigm. So, in a similar experimental fashion, it was found that you know certain mental experiences such as stress can influence your immune system. In the detail, in the, in the lecture, we have detailed uh, discussed about this experiment. You can find out that. Uh, so, that's the meaning, meaning of classical conditioning. So, the question was about in in humans how this works. So for a lot of lot of these fear responses that we learn are actually classically conditioned. So let's say uh, somebody met, met meets an accident while traveling in a car. Probably after that accident, that person will become afraid of that car, afraid of you know sitting in a car. So so, so this is a new response. Earlier the person was not afraid of sitting in a car, but after that accident, the person learned a new response. That person is now. Afraid of car, so it is learned through association that uh, that association was what car with accident. Now accident means fear. Accident evokes the fear response. Now this fear response was associated with the car. So whenever the next time the person sees the car, uh, that accident-related fear gets evoked. So this is a new response. So it's a kind of example of a classical conditioning in human beings. So similarly, a lot of human response, particularly a lot of fears and phobias that we have. Most probably, you know, these are learned through classical classical conditioning. So this is an example of classical conditioning in uh, human life, you can say. So Bindut is asking, uh, I have done till week two. All sessions are very informative, sir. Hope to learn from more for in the future. Uh, Bindut Vijaya, uh, uh, Doctor Bindut Vijaya. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Vijaya, I'm happy to hear that you are finding this lecture very informative and learning. If you have any questions, you can ask, or maybe in the future you can ask. So, so um, attend this video lectures. So there are lecture handouts also available. There are lecture transcripts also available. If you don't understand anything, you can see the transcripts. You can also see the handouts uh, of the lecture, which are kind of all the important con contents are kind of you know, posted in the PDF files. You can read them. Uh, they will be helpful in terms of doing your assignment and other things. So all kinds of materials are available. And beyond that, if you don't understand anything, you can ask questions in the portal. You can ask, uh, interact in the live session. So we'll have three live sessions in the in this season, uh, one in each month. Uh, so you will have opportunities to ask questions. Okay. So if you have any question, you can ask, or otherwise we'll wind up here.
So okay, it seems you don't have uh, many questions as of now because the course has just started. Probably will be having more questions as we proceed in the course. Uh, so in the meantime, you learn on the material. If you have any question, you can ask. And uh, I hope to see you all in the next session. Thank you.